this is uh, this is the day after surgery. Just want to give an update on what's happening. Um, yesterday came into the hospital at 10. Surgery was from 12 to 2, about an hour. Um, after the surgery, uh, I was in recovery and my heart rate shot up to like 150 and I know it was it wasn't too great it just kept going up really high and they ran a ton of laps and um, checked all kinds of stuff and they were able to bring my blood rate down, my heart rate down over long periods of time, overnight. Uh, it seems like the main reason is dehydration. I had a bowel prep the night before. Wasn't allowed to drink anything, no fluids. And uh, during the surgery and being out of it, um, I didn't have enough IV fluid, so they ended up having to give me a catheter to measure all that, which was not fun. But uh, as of right now, it looks like my heart rate's at around 110, 120. Um, pain level yesterday was really high. It was like 11 out of 10. And uh, they gave me like 15 grams of oxy and a bunch of other medications. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be waiting for a room today to get moved in. I haven't really left the recovery room yet. So we'll update you guys later. Well, today is Friday. And this morning I wasn't feeling great. Um, yesterday night after the surgery, my heart rate went to like 150. And I was really scared. Like I was getting completely like drenched in sweat and then body chills and then fingers tingling. And this morning at three, I felt really upset and they did a quick blood test on me and I found out that you know my hemoglobin went to a five, which is like the lowest I've ever been. Um, so my blood dropped from 10 to 8 to 7 and 5. And if I don't have enough blood, you know, I could pass out. So quickly they gave me two units of blood. Now it's at 8 and I'm being monitored. Last time I had surgery, I had the same symptoms and I asked for a midline, which is like a big IV up here. So you have to do so many um, IVs on me. It's probably better just do one big one. So far, um, I'm feeling good. The pain's like in control. I have some like, normal gas like sensation in my stomach um, but that's that's about it and last night I was dreading uh, to get a catheter because they wanted to monitor and see if my bladder was the problem but I think God it wasn't it took like three people to do it and I had such a traumatic experience on that in my last surgery that I just like couldn't stop being so upset over but anyways, right now they have removed my IV and it's going to try to push me towards like eating and drinking on my own. So hopefully my vitals stay so I can go home soon. Hello, it is Sunday and as you can see I'm at home. I was able to leave at 6.30 yesterday night um the surgery had uh, two scares um 
So my surgery was scheduled at 12.45 uh, the day before I had a bowel prep which meant no water after midnight and basically from midnight until 12 noon I didn't have any water because I wasn't allowed to um, sitting in the waiting area I was just you know this time I didn't prepare a lot in my mental mind to like you know not have any PTSD from my last experience but you know I just had to go for it Everything was kind of a little bit deja vu. Um, went into the surgery. I didn't see my surgeon or anything. I did my old trick, which was like not wearing my glasses and telling the anesthesiologist that I just don't want to count down. Just put me to sleep immediately. I couldn't really remember when it started happening. I didn't remember there was a gas mask or anything like that. So I woke up in recovery with a lot of pain. It felt like it was 11 out of 10. And I asked for some Oxy and they gave me some through the IV and then later on gave me um, a pill form, gave me Tylenol, Oxy, and uh, you know, just waiting it out for the pain to come down. The pain uh, after an hour or two kept hovering around eight or nine. Uh, and this time I learned from the last experience that I should just, my pain was actually pretty high and it's not really a five. So at the end, I feel like they gave me around 15 milligrams of Oxy, uh, Tylenol and other painkillers. And I just felt like I don't know, maybe psychologically, I felt like the pain was at an eight. Um, what was really scary and dangerous was uh, my heart rate was pretty beating pretty fast. I like 120 beats and, and every hour it went up by 10. So at one point, I think it was 930 at night, my heart went to like 150. I had a sudden feeling of like I didn't feel well. I think I was really pale. I suddenly I felt all hot all over. I sweated. My heart was beating so quickly, and then a lot of people rushed over. And apparently, uh, I don't know. It's there's some term for it. It's like a dangerous level of like you know. I'm not sure if it's cardiac arrest or something. There's some terminology to like a heart being so fast honestly like I was truly truly affected by um, my cousin's pe husband passing away suddenly the week before and I I was so scared I maybe it's all my morbid thoughts I was thinking like you know if this happened to me at least I'm in the hospital and someone can save me since I'm here. I know that's not the best thought I had in my mind, but it was just so fresh and new. The other thing is, like, I don't know, I just got so scared that I jokingly said to James that, like, if anything happens to me, I want everyone to know that I'm a happy person and that I'm not. I am happy uh, to be living and I don't have any regrets at all. And he just smiled at me and said, no, that's not going to happen. Anyway, um, lots of people came, drove my blood, did a bunch of tests, everything, like everything in my history, suspected something about my thyroid cancer, thought suspect something about um, blood transfusions and, and thalassemia, all the things that they were thinking about I mentioned to them that in my last major surgery I had this exact same scenario where after surgery I might have blood loss and when I have that um, my heart beats really quickly and I, I can't recover 
and last time I've gotten blood transfusions right after surgery to stabilize me like when I was 120 beats per second when they gave after they gave me blood it was able to calm down they didn't want to immediately give me blood just because I said so so at the time the doctor thinks that I was very very dehydrated I mean I'm in, I'm in their care I'm not allowed to drink water so I guess they thought like three three liters of fluid IV for uh, the day before to now was not enough fluid and that could like race my heart so they started giving me crazy amount of fluids with magnesium and all these medicines inside me to like pump up and then later I wasn't going like I, I didn't have a catheter in during my surgery because they thought that this would be quick and I wasn't going to the restroom because of my pain so they were suspecting something is wrong with my bladder or maybe I'm not able to produce pee that scared me too that's that's so scared me to thinking like god like is that another surgical procedure you have to do to like fix it I don't know just scared all around later at night um, they told me that I have to put in a catheter and last time I had such a terrible traumatic experience with this night nurse during uh, cathetering that I just was freaking out um, this time I was candid and I told the nurse what happened last time and I you know I just couldn't stop tears from coming out I was so sad um, but this time three ladies had to come and try to give me a catheter because it did not work um, but they took extra caution and extra empathy and gave me like numbing cream and stuff like that which they never tried before and it was painless and I thanked them afterwards and that kind of restored my faith a bit after I was really honest with them that it was so traumatic for me last time um, which now I am very grateful for you know the people that work at Wild Cornell I know they're extremely empathetic nurses and they do everything they can to help you um, anyway so keep pumping me IV literally tracking my pee to rule out that it's nothing wrong with my organ wasn't the greatest um, you know, feeling ever but it was fine and tolerable um, next day in the morning I just felt the heart palpitations again it was the same ones I gotten right before I needed a blood transfusion you know it's just got that fogginess you know hands are cold and my heart's jumping so quickly so you know I rang the bell to the nurses I said I know this feeling I need blood there's something really wrong they he, she took a blood test and they were really fast they actually did that blood test manually downstairs I know every day the hospital performs like two blood tests rounds but somebody did it immediately saw like my blood hemoglobin was at like a 5.5 which is like a critical level that's probably the lowest I've ever had my hemoglobin my I mean, hemoglobin was like a 6.8 before by the way, a normal person's hemoglobin should be at 11 at the bare minimum. And I've always had like, you know, low blood count in general. So anyway, they proved that what I said was correct and went, got two bags of blood, started doing the blood transfusion. And they also listened to me in putting in a midline 
mind is like a kind of a bigger procedure of an IV where they stick like a giant like tube in your arm so they can dispense like medicines and not prick your arms so many times if they can't find veins. After that, you know, I felt typical nauseating feeling, like really heavy handed sedation by the oxy and later I just uh, try to you know get off those and get to like a, like an Advil, Adleaf and Tylenol level painkiller and I don't know the whole time I was there I was just so paranoid and I'm trying to chill like I am paranoid that get poisoned like last time I was paranoid of my heart and luckily yesterday night at 6 30 they were pretty confident to let me leave they ran like six blood work in one day and I had six ECG tests because they suspect I have some type of heart disease but each time these ECG don't show anything and they told me like they really don't have an explanation of why this happened why does your heart do that scenario um, they are suggesting that I see a cardiologist because they can't tell what happened uh, yeah, I mean, the cardiologist will be able to um, run more like specific tests and tell me more information. But from the way it looks, it doesn't look like anything's wrong. The only thing they can say is, you know, because of the loss of blood at work, at the surgery, sorry, I said work, at the surgery, and also like dehydration are the two biggest things and also pain management yeah. <sighs> I don't know I don't know anyway I've been home and the only medicines I have to take are Tylenol and some Oxy obviously I'm not gonna be taking Oxy but I'm taking Tylenol and I'm taking some Aleve if there's like, any breakthrough pain sedated and haven't had any sensation it was just so weird of a feeling to have your stomach come back online like it just feels like a lot of sound going in like a chugging train I don't know it was it was super weird like like having like jolts and and lightning strikes and kind of like this it's like if a train is getting cold put into it and just like chugging on and I'm like god is that what it feels like again to have the sensation of like needing to go to the bathroom so I don't know I had that pain for last two three days and you know 98% of them is like phantom you know I have the urge to go and nothing happens it's just like powering online uh, the doctor says like just take your time everything seems fine and um, you know rest at home so I do have a track up in, a, in about 10 days in the front, my ostomy site is just a gigantic wound, which they're not gonna close. I'm gonna wait for it to close itself, which is kind of gross. Um, I have to like change my bandages a couple times a day, and yeah, it, it hurts and stings. But I will say that this time. It 
feels like it's only a fifth of the pain that I felt last time. It was still painful, but it's nowhere near like last time. It was definitely, this time it's much more like I feel like I'm in control of this pain. Like I, I feel like I can control um, my body and you know do stretches when I need or take medicine when I need to control the situation. Last time it was not. Last time it was very much like you know I'm really suppressed and I'm at the mercy. So that gives me a lot of hope and a lot of confidence. Right now, since it's only been five days, I'm still kind of paranoid and waiting for at least seven to 14 days to go by to see if I will get any poisoning or sepsis. If that time passes, I'll be in much better mood and state. So that's, that's all. Um, in terms of my food, I was released to, to eat whatever I would like. Um, but because I'm so paranoid about everything, I am being extremely careful. I'm going to stick to what I was eating previously, which is just extremely clean, very plain food, like rice, bread, and like rotisserie chicken, nothing crazy. I'm still not going to introduce any vegetables. And maybe I'll start with a little bit of like um, zucchini to start or something or a little bit of carrots because I am so paranoid on how, if everything is working properly and I've, I've read a lot of stories as well where other people had obstructions or situations come up so I don't want that to happen um, one of the things that's really important the doctor said to me is that pretty much I'll be swollen for a while and I should not have any abdominal like exercises for at least a month or two. Honestly, I feel like I just had three million crunches. There's no way I'm gonna want to have like, an, like do some abdominal exercises. <laughs> anyway, so I am on the road to recovery, on the mend, so thank you guys for people that reached out to ask how I'm doing uh, really meant a lot to me so thank you we'll be posting more updates in the next week